You're listening to the Strong and Capable podcast with your host, Bridget Heller. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this episode of the Strong and Capable podcast. I'm your host, Bridget Heller, and I have on today guest Felicia Romero. You want to say hey, hey? Hey, I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> so I feel like we warmed you. up. We like warmed yes. up because we were chatting for probably a good, I don't even know, 20 minutes prior to this, just like a random conversation. So I feel warmed up now. Yes. Random, but good conversation. That is probably oh, my favorite part about having other podcasters on the show is podcasting, at least for me. I like to go deep. I like to go deep fast. Mm-hmm. And podcasting like it's totally socially acceptable to be like tell me your deepest darkest secrets right now and we'll discuss them it'll be oh absolutely I also feel like there's this something that happens that just like oh I I haven't talked about this in years I can't believe I'm sharing this and that was actually our (laughs) conversation prior to this I'm like wait I I haven't talked about this story in a really long time so yeah it's really neat how that happens It is true. And sometimes every once in a while, I'll listen to one of my old podcasts just because someone will want a tool or they'll need a specific conversation they're interested in. So I'll go find it. And you know how it just automatically plays when you find the link, Mm -hmm. at least mine, my Apple will just automatically start playing. Sometimes it plays. I'm like, Oh, I shared that. I did that. Like the other day it was on a loop of me singing. I was singing on my podcast. That's amazing. Oh my goodness. I also think, I think it's awesome. Like how long have you been podcasting by the way? Three years, a hundred episodes hit this season. Oh, Mm -hmm. amazing. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah, Same. I've been a a podcasting for about four and a half years. I'm coming up on my 300th episode and you know, I know I'm so excited. I'm going to probably hit 300 in December and I, I don't listen to my old podcast, but I do know what's amazing about sometimes going back and like looking at some of the things that maybe you used to believe or you used to share and how your thoughts can change and your opinions mm-hmm. can change over time and you grow as a human and what you thought at one time in your life changes because of a certain situation that you've been through or a new tool that you've learned and how to cope and deal. And it's really interesting to also see the evolution of all of that as well. Mm -hmm. So that was my celebration of the hundredth episode because it, it was a moment of reflection of, okay, hundred is a legit amount of podcasts. So reflecting on the journey and realizing the person I was that started the podcast in my closet yeah, with my little cell phone as my Mm -hmm. microphone, not even remotely the woman who sits here in this chair today, not even the same. It's such a journey. It's so cool. Isn't it so cool? I love when Facebook memories pop up. Well, Mm -hmm. it's like a, it's like a a love hate. It's sometimes I cringe because in 2000, I don't know if you went through this, but like 2013, 2012, 2010, like I had really thin eyebrows. (laughs) And so sometimes (laughs) when I see those pictures, I'm like, oh my gosh, what was I thinking? But I knew I wasn't alone because a lot of girls did it. But I look back at some of that too. And even like the quotes that I posted or I'm like, oh, I know where I was at that moment in my life because based on what I was posting or the quotes I was posting. And so like, it's also kind of fun to go back and see those memories. And sometimes you have these memories that pop up. You're like, I I did this five years ago and I was in this place at this moment five years ago. Like, how cool is that? And so like, I think it's also really, really neat. Really, I think even this time last year, we were at, is it the Unstoppable Unstoppable event? Yeah, Unstoppable event. And so I even see those memories pop up and I'm like, oh, that was so special. So yeah, it's really neat. Yeah. Yeah. That was about a year ago and it was really special and sweet. I love Jennifer. She is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I've known Jennifer for years. She was actually one of my clients. So long story short, Jennifer. So I started in fitness and I know we're going to go down that road, but I started a gym out of my garage in 2002 like so long ago, I'm probably dating myself. Yes. I started business when I was 10. (laughs) Um, but like I was in college and I was dating a man at the time, my partner at the time, and we were together for about eight years, but he was a manager at a gold's gym. And so when we moved in together, we had decided that he's like, you should train people. Like you're going to college. You moved out of the house. We have to make, you have to make money, you know, training is such a great way to do that. Cause you can like work around your schedule. 
I was like, yeah. So I got certified. I was going to college. I was um, getting my bachelor's in political science at the time from Arizona State. Um, I played softball at Arizona State too. So I, I had only played a couple of years and I didn't play my junior and senior years when I started training people out of my home. And so one of my first original clients, well, you know, my my partner at the time, his name was James, started training Jennifer's husband, Talon. So okay. he was like, hey, I want you to train my wife. She doesn't like to train. She doesn't like to sweat. She doesn't like to work out, but I know she's going to love you and, you know, just make it fun for her. I was like, yeah, let's do it. So Jennifer was one of my original clients when I started in like 2002 and we trained for a couple of years. And she even says to this day, she's like, that was the best shape I was ever in. And so it's really neat to see. And then obviously knowing her whole family and their son did some of our flooring in our home. And then years later, we're still in contact. So it's pretty neat. That's really cool. The journey of how you meet people and how those relationships develop, I think is, for me, that's one of those divine pieces of your life, how you just get to see how we interweave and we connect and how these people become such a gift later on that you could never predict how that will come together and how it will be. You know, because then you guys got to do that unstoppable conference together. You spoke on stage. We're totally different women now. Yes. Like we're totally different women now. Like yes. what Jennifer's doing now wasn't even in her, wasn't even an apple in her eye at the time, right? Like she's a totally different woman, but also everything that she's gone through. And then to do this huge feat of the unstoppable event and all the things that she's doing, the retreats and the life coaching and all of it and the podcast, like she's also gone through an evolution. So it's so amazing to see women grow and change. And um, I don't know, I love it. And that's that's one of the the special things about social media is being able to keep in contact with people over the years and stay connected. So, so yeah. Stay connected. And I love, you brought up the Facebook memories. One of the things I love about it is like you said, oh, whoa, I've grown that, that fear, that hurt, that wouldn't, I don't have that. I've been able to heal that piece of myself. And I'm, Mm -hmm. I feel so much lighter because Mm -hmm. of it. Life is so much more hopeful also the things that I'm passionate about and I love like when in business a lot of times find ourselves spinning of what am I really meant to do am I fulfilling my purpose these big questions that we kind of spin on and I'll I'll look at old posts where I was passionate about a lot of the same things that I am now I've just refined it yeah just refined it 100 percent. oh my gosh I literally went through that same thing um a couple days ago when something had popped up and I was like oh my gosh I like, I still believe those same things today, Mm -hmm. that that thing I was going through and creating freedom and self acceptance and self love. And like, you know, it's yeah, you're right. It's you're right. It's it's awesome to get that confirmation for sure. Yeah. And we just spend so much time questioning what we already know, if we would just allow ourselves to sit in the belief and peace of knowing how much noise could we cut out? Oh, for sure. I just made a post this morning, actually. And I, the quote was remembering is the quickest portal to becoming. Mm -hmm. And the reason that's important is because despite what you have gone through, what the world has thrown at you or the world has told you what you should be, what society has, has deemed right or isn't right, or what social media and, you know, random people on the internet are telling you what's wrong, what isn't wrong. It's actually, you already know, you just have to remember And we only remember through, for me, the tools that have helped me is honestly getting back to childlike behavior, to Mm -hmm. fun, to dreaming, to slowing down, to coloring. Like I love to color and I love to get lost. Like a couple of days ago, my stepson and I, he's, he got off school, he did his homework and his dad got home and I was getting ready to cook dinner and we had walked the dogs and he's like, Oh, I really want to just go on a little adventure. Remember you said we were going to go here and here. I'm like, you know what I did? Let's do that. And we literally like walked a mile. We went behind the house and I have a ton of orange trees. We have a, a huge, we live on a, like an acre lot and right behind us are just like miles and miles of orange trees. Well, anyways, we went through these like secret hideaways. We went through the back. We were like, literally like, it was so fun for him because he's eight years old and he's like, wants to be on an adventure, but it was so fun to do that. So like it really, honestly, those things is, is remembering is the quickest 
portal to becoming exactly who you're meant to become, right? We, it's already within us. There's amazing tools out there. There's things that can help us or things that can catalyst us or, or move things quicker. But like, honestly, it's everything you have is already inside of you. You just have to believe and trust and have the faith that you can do it or it's there for you. I love what you said. My mentor, Danelle Delgado, she always talks about getting rid of stuff to make room for what can be or what will be. And Mm -hmm. I think what you just said is that is the process. It's getting rid of the current stories that have been built up over the years Mm -hmm. or that are keeping you stuck to remember, to allow back in that Mm -hmm. childlike wonder, that childlike being. Mm -hmm. The other day I was walking. I don't run. I walk. Um, my, my dogs are not ready for runs yet. They're way too overweight, but, (laughs) but we're, so we're walking and I was feeling this anxiety come up. And usually when I'm in nature, I don't have my phone with me. I don't, I have my watch. It keeps me safe, but I I don't use any other stimulus. I just try and be present with this moment and with my dog and the walk and what's happening. And, um, for some reason today, Oh, I had been talking to my husband. So I had my AirPods in yeah. and I had been talking to him on the walk. And then of course we hung up and my phone just went to this beautiful music. I listened to a lot of classical mm. music and there was something about this music that activated my brain into this slow down. And as my brain slowed down, I noticed how the sun was filtering through the trees. I noticed the hummingbirds that were flying along and I just felt this childlike wonder for what was around me. Mm -hmm. And it brought so much peace and hope. So I think as you were talking, the tools that stuck out to me is you got to release and explore. Exploration is such a huge part of being childlike. And then Mm -hmm. slow down. Children Mm -hmm. don't hurry unless Mm -hmm. they have something they're excited about and then they run to it. They don't, oh, I don't know if I should go get that. They run right? They run to the thing that's exciting. But other Mm -hmm. than that, they just take their time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he definitely takes his time picking up his shoes, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, you're so right. I think another really big thing for me is something that's really helped me over the years is especially in building a business. Now I ran gyms. I owned gyms for almost 15 years throughout Gilbert. And I sold my last gym in 20 end of 2017. And I think something that I've really incorporated these last few years as someone who really worked in that hustle culture mode, like I wore my no sleep, like a badge of honor. Like I was hustling. I thought that I had to do all the things and that really ran me into the ground. And I'm not going to knock hustle culture because I do feel that you need a certain amount of it in order to get stuff done. And honestly, I don't know if you follow Alex Hermosi. I love Alex Hermosi. I think there are people who just like to work, who want to spend their Saturday and Sunday dreaming of their business and working on their business. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not going to say like that there is anything wrong with that. But I think for me, I didn't have the tools back then like I do now. So I often think, gosh, I would be such a better brick and mortar business owner now because I have the tools and I've learned how to delegate. I'm a better leader. I'm a better manager. Like I, cause I, I'm more of that big thinker versus like working in the business. So I definitely mm-hmm. would have like delegated a lot more, but you know, y- you have to learn through that. Right. And we learn through that. And so like for these last couple of years, being able to slow down and, and what I call it, leave room for magic. So a lot of the the steps that I've taken these last couple of years, there are logical steps. There are things you should do in order to get from point A to point B, but also what happens when you can leave a little room for the unknown, getting curious about the possibilities of this new thing, right? And curiosity has really kind of like been a catalyst for these experiences that I've been creating for women for the, I'm doing this goddess yoga master certification. Now it's not the logical choice I've been mentoring and I have a fitness consulting business and a um, corporate wellness business that are streams of income that I have. But this other stream has been like so fun, but it wasn't the logical thing, but Mm -hmm. my body 
felt like it was. It was like, oh, this feels so good to create these experiences for women. Why not do that? So I think something for me these last couple of years and what I even suggest for those that are listening right now is like, when you do slow down and you take that time to walk with gratitude and to notice the sunlight and notice the trees and notice how green the, the, the grass is like, can you also like get curious about Mm -hmm. the possibilities for your life? Because no fear is really loud. Fear Mm -hmm. is the thing that is like, you're not good enough. What are people going to think the judgment? What if I fail? What if I succeed? I don't have the resources, but faith, is that inner knowing faith is the trust faith is the thing that you don't quite hear unless you get quiet. Right. Mm -hmm. And so fear also is the distractions. Fear is the, you not being able to, you know, slow down. Fear could be the, you keeping yourself busy by doing things that aren't really moving the needle in your life or holding you back or keeping you small. And faith is usually that little nudge, that inner knowing, that intuition, that thing that would be like, oh, wouldn't that be so fun if that's the curiosity piece, right? And so like, Mm -hmm. what if you just like leaned into the curiosity? What if you leaned into the thing that wasn't the logical plan, but, you know, you created this magic with? And so that's something that I've really been working on these last couple of years and really leaned into. I love that lean into the curiosity. I think so you lean into the curiosity that breeds creativity and creativity mm-hmm. creates possibility. Yeah. Uh, like uh, it's this yes. beautiful pattern. I love to call Monday's possibility days mm-hmm. because I would wake up on Monday and I hated it mm-hmm. for a long time when I was just, I was in this very unhealthy place and I would wake up and all I would think of is all the to do's. What are we even having for dinner every night? Because I have to actually like make a meal every night for some reason here. <laughs> like, right, you know, right. All the all the to dos were hitting me and any meetings. I would just feel overwhelmed waking up. And it was one of those, how can I flip the script on this one? And I don't always love just flipping the script because sometimes you bypass the work that you need to do. Yeah. You're right at the root of yeah. what's happening here. But in this case, it worked it, flipping the script to, okay, what could be possible this week? If I allowed myself to dream mm-hmm. instead of just plan, just be in the doing, what if I, what if I sit a little bit more in dreaming? And if I could do anything this week, what would I do if it wasn't about the to-do list? And so then it became possibilities day. And what I found is there's actually room for my doing the things I have to do to live Mm -hmm. and for possibilities that there can Mm -hmm. be both. Oh, there absolutely can. You know what I also think, and I would love to know if your audience at all, or if if you've struggled with this, but I think for a lot of women, and I'm imagining that you probably have more women listeners. I feel too, and this was also me, I can speak from experience, but I think sometimes for a lot of women, we have trouble actually figuring out what we do want, right? Mm -hmm. What we do desire. I think sometimes we don't give ourselves permission to even think of the possibilities or what is possible because maybe you're a mom and you feel guilt or shame and like, gosh, I should be focusing on these things, you know, or maybe you have experience past failures. And so that comes through. And so like, I think really allowing yourself to believe what is possible for you. And a lot of times that is claiming, claiming what you want and getting really clear on what you want, because how can you work towards anything if you don't even know what it is that you want in your life? So it's first getting clear on that. And I know for many women, and I've been working for women for a really long time, it's like a lot of women have a lot of struggles with that, even just knowing what it is that they want. Thank you for saying that. And I, I think that's so important because what you want, whatever whoever's listening, whatever you want is not going to be like what anyone else wants. It might have a flavor of what Mm -hmm. other people want. You know, there's a lot of women who want to coach other women and help them be awesome. But there, and every stage of your life, you will want different things. So being in tune to at this moment, what do I want? Mm -hmm. Because there have been times in my life where really all I wanted was for my three kids to be healthy and happy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like this Mm -hmm. is my deepest desire at this time is for them to be at peace with themselves Mm -hmm. and with the world that they're in. And so it's okay for that season to allow 
my energy to fully go into that if that truly is my desire. Yeah. And right now, while my children are very important to me still, my deepest desire is to build a community of where women feel safe. And mm -hmm. I am building that with the queen circle. And so building this community is what my soul, not my soul, but so much of my energy is going to because it is my desire. Mm -hmm. So I love that, that yeah. tapping into what do you really want and what do you really want right now? And maybe uh, allowing yourself, okay, but in the future, what do I really want? Because I think there's hope in knowing this is the stage I'm in and maybe at some point I'm going to jump into that and that will be exciting when it's time. Mm, yeah. Time. I love that as well. I think honoring the season that you're in has been so important. For instance, I have been coining this phrase lately. Well, it's not mine, but like I saw it on TikTok. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> I never put a phrase to that or like a definition to that, but I've been in this like soft life era. Didn't even know that what that was until I saw the description and I saw someone talking about, it. I'm like, whoa, this is what I've been in these last couple of months. And so like summertime, I had come off of two big launches um, first quarter and second quarter. And I just, I felt like I couldn't catch my breath. And as someone who is like such a planner, I do love strategy. I do love thinking proactive mm -hmm. in my business, thinking ahead. I just wanted to like take a breather and have long mornings, take long walks, play, get lost with time, like not even focusing on time, play pickleball in the afternoon, like just do things that were not just like, oh, I got to launch the next thing, or I got to do this next thing. And so I've been in that season these last couple of months, knowing that that time to like sit back, rest, reflect, um, you know, take, take my time is, is only going to help me when I go to, when I go to the season for the rocket ship, right? Like I said, I'm writing mm -hmm, a book mm -hmm. and I want to get that done. Well, I have big plans for this book. Like I want to be on a book tour and I want to do these things. Well, that's going to require a different type of energy from me. And if I'm always in that energy, I won't have time to really like reflect or sit back and do things for me. And so, you know, knowing that that's the season that I'm in right now, and I need that season in order to gear me up for the things that I want to plan in the future. I think it's important to realize that, or maybe you're a mama and you're like, gosh, my kid kiddos are little. And I just want to really just like spend this time with them and enjoy it and be there for them and be super present. And knowing that, you know, that, that, that little flicker of that dream or that business that you want to create, it's still there. It's still in the distance. It's just not the season for it right now. And that's okay too. So, you know, honoring the season that you're in is so important. And that could get really hard, Bridget, because of social media. We always mm -hmm. feel like we're behind. Mm -hmm. We're comparing mm -hmm. ourselves. We are looking at what others are doing and feeling like, oh my gosh, I should be doing that too. And I think that can be really, really tricky to navigate if if you are in that comparison mode. I, I always, I, I say that the quickest way to, you know, I, I, like enter any sort of energetic block that you might be feeling right now when it comes to wealth, when it comes to growth, I believe comes down to three things. And so those energetic blocks come from comparison, so when you are comparing yourself to others, when you are in like any sort of inaction, so like paralyzed, when you, again, back to the women not knowing what they want, when you don't know what you want, I actually do believe it creates more burnout because when we mm -hmm. are, when we don't know what we want and we're trying to figure it out and we feel like we're doing all the things, but the, the needle isn't moving. So then what happens? You're actually not really being productive and you end up burning out. So you don't have any energy for like the big creative things or the things that you actually want to do or the things that actually move the needle. So inaction and, and indecision is actually a decision that is keeping mm -hmm. you stuck. And so, um, yeah. And then my last, and this one is super important and such uh, something I still struggle with is boundaries, right? Saying yes to all the things, not staying true to your own boundaries, maybe even boundaries with your price point, still doing things at your lower price point, knowing that it's not an energetic match for what you're wanting to create. Um, those are all things that I feel will block you, like subtly block you from your growth, from your wealth, from your evolution. And so those are things that I, you know, I'm always really looking at for myself. Yeah. You were talking about boundaries. I was thinking about I don't know why this popped into my head, but everything you shared is so important. And I see it within the coaching world so consistently, mm -hmm. specifically for women, because you've seen this huge wave of women come into the coaching world. And so many of them take these courses, they spend thousands and thousands, I mean, 
40,000, 30,000, $50,000 getting certified in these programs. And then within a year or back at work, I'm not saying there's, they've done anything wrong. What I'm saying is I see this pattern consistently where they go into this program, they're full of hope. They see their mentor and they're like, I'm going to be like them, that, mm-hmm. that person. Mm-hmm. And then they don't have clear vision of what they specifically offer the world. What is their mm-hmm. brand of magic? Mm-hmm. And they're comparing themselves to all these other people that maybe in within their own cohort, they've seen fly mm-hmm. or their actual mentor who's in the millions now mm-hmm. and they can't get there. And so they just, after a year, they're burnt out. Like you yeah. said, they're just burnt out and they return yeah. and they return defeated to their yeah. former life. And that it breaks my heart because it's just a cycle that is so unhealthy. I feel like for women right now. Yeah. Um, and I, what I see a lot of is them not saying, this is the example that came to my mind. They're not saying yes to the things that mm-hmm. they're best at. They're not saying mm-hmm. yes to the way they could serve the world. They're not saying yes to starting small and mm-hmm. allowing it to scale. Mm-hmm. Um, so my husband, he had the opportunity to go to Peru. He got this invitation. He served a mission for the LDS church. And they said, we're doing a reunion. Come down to Peru. And he, he said, I kind of want to go. Then you should go. Yeah. I mean, you should go to Peru. That sounds yeah. amazing. You've wanted to go for 20 years. You should go. Uh-huh. And he said, I don't know if I can. And I, so it was a say yes. This is a boundary he was placing on himself. I don't know if I can. That was an unhealthy boundary. So mm-hmm. boundaries, we don't use them when we need them. Mm-hmm. And then we hide behind them to not do the things that would fill us the most. Mm. give us the best satisfaction, right? So Mm -hmm. boundaries, it's so funny. Everyone says, I don't know. I'm not very good at boundaries. Yes, you are when they don't benefit you. Yeah, you're great at boundaries. (laughs) You're great at hiding behind them. You're not great at utilizing them to lift you and support you. So he, I said, Mike, you should, you should look into it. He does. Well, he travels the world. So he had free tickets, all these credits. So he literally could go down to Peru for free. And then yeah. it's, it's a very cheap co- country once you get there. So yeah. he's like, all these things came together and within 24 hours, he's going to Peru. I'm so excited for him. And then he looks at me and he says, well, you should be excited because you're going to. So like Thank now you. we're going to Peru and we're going to Machu Picchu and all these amazing things. And we're so excited that we're driving. And he says, you know, it's crazy. What can unfold when you just say yes. Mm-hmm. And I was like. Oh, my little coaching heart is so happy oh, right now. <laughs> I love that. Where are you guys going to Peru? In November. We're going in November. Oh, and amazing. we're so excited. We're so excited. But I love that when he said, when you just say yes, it's amazing what can happen. For him, it felt so big. Like, there, I don't know how logistically we'll work it. And mm-hmm. and can we even get the flights? And what does it? Mm. There were just so many um, blocks in his mind. Mm-hmm. But just saying yes made him, it was easy. It was actually Mm -hmm. easy to get block after block after block just removed right away. Yeah. So I think when it comes to boundaries, it's saying yes to the right things and saying no thank you to the things that you're hiding behind using as excuses, I'm going to be blunt, or that you've been hurt by. Like if you don't want to deal with that thing anymore, you got to say yes to therapy, yes to healing. You have to say yes to the things that will get rid of this. Mm, I love that. I love that. That's such a, an awesome Testament to even just saying yes. And it, he felt it inside. He's like, Oh, I really want to go. But then it's mm-hmm. easy to like, think of all of the blocks that are coming in the way. Oh my gosh, that's powerful. Um, I want to speak to something that you mentioned earlier, um, when it came to, cause I imagine this could really actually, this advice I'm going to give us could really benefit the women in your community that are in entrepreneurship online, our coaches or service-based or something like that in the online world. But when you speak to the fact that women who get certifications and then they want to start their online business. And when we think about anything that we're about to start a new workout plan, a new job, your business, your new podcast, your whatever it is, we're so excited in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I also feel what happens is we set these really, really big expectations. Right. Mm -hmm. So think about your weight loss journey. If you've been on one you want to lose 20 pounds in the first four months. And like, let's say maybe your weight doesn't shift at all. And all of a sudden Mm -hmm. you're like, 
I, this isn't working when actually it is a lot of things are working under the, under the surface. So when we think about your business and we think about these expectations that we set on ourselves, and this goes back to comparison of like, look at all of these coaches that are creating all of these businesses. Oh my gosh, she just made a hundred thousand in a month. Like this is what's possible. Yes. But like, I want to do that too. Well, you know, when we set these big expectations, we don't realize that this woman has uh, been in business for five years and her first two years, she barely made 30 K that year, right? Like we're not taking that into regard. Oftentimes we compare our chapter one to someone else's chapter 20. And so like, I just want to mention that. So like, if you are in business and you're not where you want to be yet, and I say the word yet, because it doesn't mean that it's off the table for you. It means that you've set the bar too high, right? We do this in everything. We do this with our health. We do this in relationships. We do this with everything, like setting the bar too high. And then when our expectations don't meet that bar, we are left defeated and wanting to go back to what we think is safe, what we think is comfortable, what we think is for us because, oh, I must not be cut out to be an entrepreneur because I can't do this thing. No, you just haven't set realistic expectations. So that's number one. Number two, something that I teach in my communities to my women and something that I've only can speak of because I have embodied it. I have been through it is, can we be just as excited on as we were on day one, can we be just excited on day 465, right? This is holding the energy through a launch, holding the energy in your business, like treating your business as if it was the beginning of your business, right? Holding that energy through it all. And also holding the energy through failed launches, through no income, through people saying no in your DMs, you know, can you cultivate and embody that excitement, that, that energy and regulate your nervous system essentially to be able to handle it all? Because if you can stick it out, if you can continue to work on your mindset and being able to embody that energy with five people at your masterclass or 500 people at your masterclass, if you can do that. You will survive. You will make it. You will make the money. And I also third and last point to this is we often see the money, the dollar signs of what others are doing. And that gets us really excited. That's one of the things like, oh, this is really cool. I can work where I want and be with my kids, and like make the money. And I want to say this. The money is great and the money and having a money goal is fantastic. I am the first one that will talk about money all day long. I love talking about money, but if you only make that the goal, right? If that is your goal, it, and when you don't hit it, or even when you hit those milestones, cause I've hit the milestones of hundred K years, 250 K years. I closed this last year out with 400 K it's like, you've hit those goals, but then like, you know, nothing really changes. It really doesn't. And I, and I, I know that's hard to say, like I've heard millionaires say, well, I don't really care about the money. I'm like, well, cause you're a millionaire already. And I know it's easy to say, like to think that when you're not there yet, but I promise you, if you think about this each and every day, whenever you are like, gosh, I'm not where I want to be yet. I haven't made the money I want to make yet. Don't make that the thing. If you can get up today, today and say, I'm going to serve from this heart centered place. And I'm going to speak to one person today on this podcast. Maybe you're listening to the words that I'm saying um, through a post, through a message, through whatever it is that you is your conveyor of, of information, whatever you use, whatever portal you use. Can we just serve from this heart centered place? And if you can remember that and not make it about the money, the money will come. The money will come. You will get to where you want to get. And I guarantee you all of the coaches that you follow, yes, some of them have really fantastic marketing, but did they start with fantastic marketing? Probably not. They probably flopped a thousand times before it finally hit. Um, you know, it's it's really important to know. And so if we can just get back to the heart-centered work of why you're doing what you're doing, it will work out. I promise you. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention those few things that I feel like could really serve your audience. And I believe the world is making this little shift. We've been allowing ourselves to be influenced for years through all these different platforms. And I think people are kind of throwing that off. They're like, I don't want to be influenced. I want to make a decision. And when mm -hmm. you're looking at your social media and, and the different things you're consuming, like I, I did a post about the best thing that's bringing me peace right now is unfollowing people. Just yeah. If the energy is not good or if mm -hmm. they're 
look at me. I am this. I just unfollow. I'm like, I just don't. I just want things that mm-hmm. fill me up. That's all I want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I've just been unfollowing. And it's like liberating every time you're like, no, thank you. I don't know. Yeah. It's a boundary setting, right? Like, no, yeah. no. Absolutely. And, um, I was surprised at how many people messaged me or called me, texted me, all the things. I'm doing that too. And it feels so good. Mm, so many amazing. people. Yeah. So many people are doing that. I think it's because we're tired of being told who we are. Mm-hmm. Tired of being told how to do the thing. We want to make the decision. We are intelligent human beings and we want to make the decision. And so if you're not serving from a place of, I truly want to serve and lift you in some way, however I'm able to, then I think people, you probably won't be successful at this point because people aren't here to be sold to. They're not here yeah. for anymore. They're here for yeah. the real thing. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. There has been a shift. And I think honestly, if we were to really look at just if we were just to really kind of take a look analytically at what's been happening the last couple of years, when it comes to social media, you know, Instagram is not the same as it was in 2015, during the pandemic, when you can throw something up and it sells, you're so right. It's like, I think even with the emergence of people in more podcasts and the emergence of TikTok and some of these new platforms, the storytelling and really getting to know a person and really understanding their values, their core values, who they are, their family life, they're just getting to know a person through their podcast, through their social media, through their TikTok. I think that that shift in the, even the type of content that is doing well has really changed. Um, and so again, back in business, I think there's one thing to always just keep doing what you're doing, but if it's not working, you have to evolve with the times, right? Look at any big business. I think we can use the example of Amazon. I think everyone knows that example of how, you know, they sold books out of our garage and they're this billion, billion dollar industry that has evolved over time, but they had to evolve with the times, right? Look who's got stuck behind like Blockbuster. They thought that Netflix was a joke. Like this isn't going to do anything, right? But like, gosh, you're going to get left behind if you don't evolve and also stay true to you and and, and create that authenticity with your audience. Um, and people also, I think these day, this day and age also see through the lack of authenticity, like they can feel it, they can see it. And I think there's also that as well. Like just people are getting a little bit more savvy in who they're following and why they're following them and, and whether they're authentic or not. Yeah. I always say people are smart. They're not dumb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so don't treat your audience like they're not. It's funny. I had a podcast. I shared this on my hundredth episode. I had a podcast like two years ago where I am always... I want all people to feel loved and accepted. I'm a bridge builder. I'm not a, you have to do it this way. I'm a bridge builder between ideas and beliefs because there's truth. There's so much beauty and truth in the world. And so I wasn't ever saying God. I was like, God, universe. I was like saying 10 titles, like whatever you mm-hmm. believe, I would say 10 things because mm-hmm. I wanted all people to feel safe in this knowledge I was sharing. But the right. fact is I'm a Christian. And so what I found is by pausing and doing all the titles, it would stop my flow of energy. Mm. So then I wasn't showing up as my best self on the podcast. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It was no, it wasn't that I didn't want to disrespect people. It was that, that because I was pausing to acknowledge all things, yeah. I, so I finally came on my podcast a little like emotional. I was like, listen, guys, I just got to tell you, <laughs> like, yeah. it's horrible to me now, but I was like, yeah. I am a Christian and I believe you are an intelligent audience and I'm just going to say God. And I want you to disseminate that and take these knowing yeah. into your own belief system. I want you to do yeah. that. And I felt like so vulnerable and like I was conquering this huge mountain and Mm -hmm. I had a listener, she reached out to me. She says, Oh honey, we know. Yeah. You're, you're having a moment here, but actually we already knew. Yeah. That is, I love this awareness and I love that you shared this because you're so right. And also maybe for you, you identify, you identify with the word God Mm -hmm. and you can share that on your podcast, you know, and I think we also, I, I, I love that we want to include everyone and we want, but I also think too, whatever is true for you and others can feel that as well. And they can just, like you said, realize like, gosh, well, I don't identify with the word God, but I know what she means. Right. I love this quote by Mary Ann Williamson. Um, and anytime I read it, she uses the word God in the quote, but you know, and I, I 
I believe in God. I'm not any sort of like, I'm not a religious person. I would say I'm, I steer more, a little bit more towards spirituality, but I, I believe that there is a higher being. There is a universe. And I, I say, God, I I've prayed. I, I believe that you can do both, but I see this quote and I'm like, gosh, you know, she uses the word God, but I just love this quote so much, but I take it for myself. However, I want to analyze or want to take in that quote. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't, I don't find any sort of, um, like judgment towards it, or it doesn't trigger me, or I don't find a reason to be triggered or to be offended. And I think this day and age too, like people are always looking for reasons to get offended in some way. Like you can literally take the most beautiful uh, situation or beautiful photo or beautiful, whatever it may be scenario. And someone is always going to find fault with it. You know, like I saw this one, um, this was a while, while ago, but there's this woman that shared her beautiful garden she was just like basking in gratitude. She's like, I'm just so grateful that my husband and I decided to build this garden. And she's sitting outside drinking her coffee and just looks so peaceful. And in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is a dream. I love this. But then you're like looking at these comments and people are like, it must be nice. Oh well, some people have to work. Oh, well, I wish I could be, um, you know, a well-off white woman that could just like have this garden. And I'm like, what is happening in this world? Like, why are we so divided that we can just take this beautiful photo of a woman sharing her garden and pick it apart? And then what just hits me, like, you are not going to please everyone. Mm -hmm. And the more that you try, mm -hmm. you are giving your power away. You are losing a little bit of yourself each and every time. And if you can just stay true to you and, and know that there, if you decide to show up big in this world, if you decide to share anything, your truth, whatever, there are always going to be people who don't agree with you. So you might as well lean into yeah. sharing exactly what is on your heart because the right people, I promise you will show up for you and be there. And so, and the wrong people hopefully leave, but, um, I think that's just an important, important to remember that there's always going to be critics. There's always, people can tear apart the, the most simplest of things and that is okay. You are not, you're not for them and they're not for you. And that is okay. Yeah. And when you lean in, the coolest part about it is you feel empowered because you leaned in. And then when you get that opposition, that hate or that frustration towards you, then it gives you two opportunities. A, are they just confused supporters? They think they're trying to help you out. So that could be a thing. Mm -hmm. But also it allows you to say, hey, am, do I believe this? Because I, when I said it, I believed it. And am I going to still believe it? And mm -hmm. that's empowering when you, well, I guess you could walk away, but usually you're going to, if you said it, you're going to say, yes, yes, mm -hmm. I still believe this. This is who I am. Mm -hmm. And when you stand on that, it, it makes you a little more unshakable in this world. Yeah. yeah. 100%. 100%. And honestly, if you look at anyone who's ever even shared an opinion online, and I'm thinking of like, I don't even know, like anybody who has been canceled or who, who've gone through hell and back online, I think a couple of years ago, a lot of coaches online were going through a lot of like cancel culture. You know what? Again, back to just staying true to you and showing up you're going to go through that. You might go through, I went through, I went through it. Unfortunately, many times I was on a reality show called fit to fat to fit. I went through it on the online space for a couple of months. Sometimes I, I actually still get it because the show is now airing on Hulu, but you know, you have to, you know, who you are. I know who I am. No one can tell me who I am. And so like those things don't really, for me now, cause I've developed a thick skin, don't really seep past the surface because I am so, um, in my power and embodied in who I am, the 20 year old Felicia, unfortunately that would have, that would have destroyed me. Right. But like the person now it does not. And that's why it really worries me. These young people on social media and like my sister, I have a younger sister. We're 16 years apart. And I remember she was going through like this, like losing friends phase in high school. And she's like, yeah, this girl blocked me and all of these things. And it was like at that time, so devastating for her, me being 16 years older, I know I'm like, Destiny, this, this is nothing. I promise you like, this won't mean anything to you in five years, but at that time it was everything to her, you know? And so I had to like sympathize with that. And so I think it's, it's, it's hard, especially for young people who don't know who they're, they are yet. They don't know themselves yet. And I think even think there's some women who haven't gone through the personal growth of really knowing themselves and, and letting that really get to them. Well, that's why the strong and capable exist, right? Because yes. that's the process is getting to know yourself and, and loving it and letting go of ego so that you can step 
into yeah. your, your greatness. Yes. Um, my sister actually said, she said, you know, what's worse than a no these days. And I said, what? She's a thumbs down. <laughs> Just that is the worst. It's way yeah. worse. It hurts. Yeah. It hurts so much deeper. <laughs> than no. Right. It really does. You know what I think they did on YouTube? I'm not on YouTube very much, but I saw that they did away with the dislike button. <laughs> they only have the thumbs up button. I think so they, you can't even leave a dislike. You can leave a bad comment, but you can't leave, send a dislike. And I think that was like very visceral for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like, thumbs down hurts so much worse. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I have loved having you. I, I love this conversation. It's just flowed all over the place and this has been fun. So if you could leave our audience with like, okay, if you're struggling, here's the first thing you start with in your opinion, like here's where I start and then how they can find you. We need these two things. Mm, Awesome. Well, I think it's having the awareness and discerning exactly what it is that you're struggling with, I think is the first step, you know? So if you feel stuck, let's just use the word stuck. If you're stuck and taking any sort of action towards your health goals, your business, your whatever it is that it, that, that it is that you want to do, I think just Taking taking radical responsibility and knowing that I am the only one right now that can change the outcome, right? So what sort of action do I need to take? So the first thing that I do, I'm going to be totally honest, is I don't set goals. Essentially, I love to set intentions and I make those action-based intentions. And the reason I, I lean into action is because I believe action is something that helps dissipate any sort of anxiety that you may be feeling about the thing that you're scared of doing. Okay. So if we can just set some really simple action-based goals today, that could be, you know, getting your, a walk-in that could be, I'm going to look at my day and I'm going to make a post talking about this story or my free lead generation offer or whatever it is. I'm assuming that many of your, your audience is in business, but like just set a couple of action-based goals today Mm -hmm. and do it because action creates momentum. And that's one of the best things that you can have in your life in business is having some momentum feeling some like, Ooh, I got some work underneath. Like I could do this, which then creates opportunity because you could be a, a call away, a conversation away from changing someone's life, from creating a big financial cash flow this week in your business, from creating a big opportunity in your life. So that's the advice I would give. Yeah. That is awesome. Okay. So how can they find you then? Yes. I hang out over on Instagram. So at Felicia Romero, just my first and last name, you can shoot me a DM. I have a lot of free tools in my, my bio, some free downloadables. I'm coming out with a masterclass specifically for like wellness coaches, fitness coaches, mindset coaches that are really going to help you generate and create five figure months. I have a podcast called the high Felicia podcast. I also am over on TikTok. I use TikTok for just like fun content. I really kind of like, it allows me to get my creativity out and create like fun content that I normally wouldn't post on Instagram just because I feel like there's different energy over on TikTok. I would say Instagram is probably the easiest way to get a hold of me. I love it. I'm an Instagram girl too. So that will be easy for the audience to find you. And of course I will post her bio and all the links in the show notes. So if you want to find Felicia, it is easy for you. We'll make it easy and I'll tag her when I do the social media. So you can just click on that little tag and thank you, Felicia, for coming on. This has been amazing. Thank you. This was so fun. Thanks for having me.